In a busy kitchen, several chefs and their assistants are preparing various dishes. Olivia, our main character, receives a complimentary nod after the head chef Robert tastes her dish. The joy of every employee. She then receives a call that will require her to travel home. The look of shock on her face, her phone falling and the sound of shattering glass would leave you wondering what news she just received. Olivia breaks the news of her intended journey to Robert, who isn't taking her request with all seriousness. He feels they will be struggling if Olivia leaves for the two days she is requesting. They are in the peak season and also opening a new restaurant. It will be the worst time for her to abandon them. She explains that it's her grandmother's funeral, and it's important that she travels to pay her last respects. Robert eventually grants her permission as he wouldn't dare to replace one of their best chefs. Olivia hits the road immediately, and in a few hours, she arrives at Bodsky, her hometown. She used to love visiting the place. She remembers that one time, she and some local kids got drunk on fermented cherries. She had thought her grandmother would strangle her, but thankfully, she didn't. She remembers her mom saying she got her cooking talent from her grandmother, and also her hot temper. She accidentally bumps into a man who is working on a signage on the road. Shocked at what happened, she gets out of her vehicle and begins to panic as she shakily dials the emergency line. The man fortunately comes to, and she yells at him out of frustration while he is still struggling to stand straight. She lashes out at him saying that the sign is supposed to be before the bridge. The man wonders if she and other people from the city know how to apologize at all. Olivia demands that he should be the one who's sorry for suddenly jumping in front of her car. The man picks up some traffic cones and places them on the road, blocking off Olivia's way, and she angrily asks why he is doing that. He tells her he is going on lunch break and invites her to join him. The audacity, this infuriates Olivia more. He tells her to ask politely and say sorry to him, and he might just cut his break short. She angrily gets into her car and sticks out her middle finger to him before reversing speedily. Patience is definitely not her strong suit. Olivia follows the directions on her map and gets lost in the middle of nowhere. She feels really enraged, but promises her late grandma that she will maintain her composure. She picks up her handbag, heels, and stylish shades. Determined like never before, she walks through the fields. Unbeknownst to her, someone is hiding in the grass and spying on her. The old man pulls out his phone and informs the person at the other end that the heiress has arrived. Could this heiress be the fiery Olivia? She arrives in town after a long walk. Then she switches shoes from the sneakers she wore to a black heel which she reserved for her visit. She draws a long breath and walks towards the house. Jan, the person who called her about her grandmother's passing, welcomes her and ushers into the room where her grandmother's corpse lies in a casket. Olivia walks into the room wearing a sad face as she says her last goodbyes to her grandmother. She apologizes for not being by her side, and just then, the corpse breaks into a smile and speaks. A trick taken too far? Olivia screams in horror and runs out of the room while her grandmother calls out to her continuously. Watching the deceased resurrect is no small feat. Later, Olivia is pacing back and forth in the garden angrily. Helena, her grandmother, explains to her granddaughter that the trick is to make her come to visit her. She emphasizes that Olivia doesn't make any time to come check on her poor grandmother who has been living alone with the hens and goat. Olivia feels a bit emotional with her granny's speech, but then she turns around and looks Helena in the face, questioning her whereabouts when she needs her grandmother in her life. She angrily walks away from her grandmother. Who wouldn't, after such an expensive prank? She walks back to where her car is parked and tries to start it, but the car refuses to respond. With all the pent-up emotions in her, she screams Helena's name in anger, and then gets out of the vehicle to attempt to fix it by herself. Helena soon comes after her, driving a tractor. She laughs at her angry granddaughter who is walking farther away from her. She informs Olivia that wolves are out there in the woods, but Olivia shuts her up, reminding her that she is not some five-year-old who will be threatened by that statement. She eventually gives up and allows her granny to tow her vehicle to the house. Later that night, Helena takes her around the house. She apologizes for the funeral trick and admits that she needs Olivia's help now, more than ever. She accuses her grandmother that she only remembers her and her mother when she needs their help. Helena reveals that she is currently in some debt because a local plantation owner who is also an herb tycoon has taken her to court. Someone also reported her to the health department resulting in her getting banned from making cheese. Olivia acts unconcerned about this and suggests she just retire and sell the house instead. This is not the reply Helena is expecting. She reminds her granddaughter what the land means to both of them, especially the memories they shared during her childhood days in that very same house. She embraces her granddaughter and assures her that both of them can make it work. This doesn't end well because Olivia reminds her that she still has to go back home. 
The following morning, Olivia wakes up to the sound of horses and goats scattering her things. She chases them away and angrily calls out for her grandmother. Doesn't feel so great to find animals ransacking one's belongings, and Olivia is not going to take this lightly. She gets into the main house and finds more animals everywhere with her grandma nowhere in sight. But she is about to get a shock. After reading the note Helena pinned to a window, she realizes that her grandma has abandoned her to care for the farm animals. In her letter, Helena directs Olivia to a man named Wojtek, who usually helps her out around the farm. It's crazier that she put the property in Olivia's name, and leaves her with the decision to sell her grandmother's property or not. Quite a setup. Olivia quickly grabs a goat who is about to chew a piece of paper on the table. She succeeds in getting the paper out of its mouth. She reads the letter and finds out it is a notary, and her grandmother indeed indicated her name as the new owner of the farm. While in her state of confusion, and trying to put everything together, she hears some men arguing outside. Olivia quickly runs out to ask about Helena's whereabouts, but the two guys, Zbyshek and Romek, are much more engrossed in their silly argument. She believes it's some kind of show they are putting up to make her quit disturbing them. Later that day, she decides to go check out the address belonging to Wojtek, which Helena describes in her letter, and to her utmost surprise, it's the man whom she almost ran over the day before. What a surprise! Olivia laughs because it's no wonder her grandmother's farm is falling apart. Anyway, she introduces herself and requests for his help with the farm. The man scoffs and plays along with the name she calls him because his actual name is Kuba Wolak. He asks her to get into the car, and he drives them both back to Helena's house. They soon arrive at the house and Olivia is in a state of confusion seeing the animals littered everywhere from the compound to inside the main house. Handling the mess is going to be a tough one. Kuba's puppy runs to him and prompts him to follow as it leads them to the animal shelter. Olivia follows suit as well, and when they get inside, they find a goat in labor. Will there be an end to these surprising events? She watches in what looks like awe, horror, and astonishment, as Kuba handles the delivery of the kid. After its birth, the joy on her face radiates as she can't take her eyes off the newborn. She can literally feel the excitement of the other animals as they welcome a new member. Doesn't feel so bad after all. Kuba informs her that the animals are hungry and they need to be fed. He asks her to milk all of them. After all, Helena is her grandmother, so she isn't allowed to say she doesn't know how to milk them. Moments later, Kuba brings out two containers, filled with milk from the goats. He takes them to the car trunk, and Olivia, who is following behind him, informs him that she needs to get back to work tomorrow, and that he has to be the one to take care of everything. Kuba chuckles, and tells her he is a busy man, and has his own work to do, so she needs to figure out what she wants to do herself. He gets into the vehicle, and calls his dog, then leaves, after reminding Olivia to keep the young animals fed. Two can play the busy game, but what would she do? Kuba drives off to Herbal World where he is taking care of a horse alongside his daughter named Tola. The real Wojtek who has a flair for performing music, drives back from the city with his vehicle. He complains about his gas-guzzling vehicle, and the audience who doesn't even appreciate his performance. Meanwhile, Olivia goes to the police station on her bicycle to lay a report on her missing grandma. Who knew someone who willingly leaves can count as missing? She sees a police officer eating her lunch to report it, but she only tells her that Helena is free to move around. Besides, nothing bad can happen to her in Bodsky. The police officer seems to be an old acquaintance, as she reminds Olivia of when they used to go apple-picking together since she no longer recognizes her. Olivia recalls the face now, and she's so glad to see Matilda, who has grown quite bigger than she used to be. The girls do some catch-up and spend some time eating as well. Matilda reveals that Helena used to come over to the station to use her internet to check up on Olivia, whenever she missed having her granddaughter around. She tries to ask again where her grandmother is, but Matilda just seemingly tries to distract her, by asking her to eat more. Once she's back on the farm, a goose starts chasing her while getting some eggs from the chicken coop, and some vegetables. She also accidentally lets out the goats after feeding them, and then struggles to get them back to their shelter. It's indeed a tiring one as she ends up falling asleep on the bench outside the house. The following morning, Olivia wakes up to Jan's greetings. He's in the neighborhood, so he decides to stop by and see how she is doing. She asks him about Helena's whereabouts, but he denies knowing anything about it while crossing his fingers behind his back. He soon bids her goodbye and reminds her that Helena truly misses her, and she's the only one Helena has right now. Jan drives off on his scooter and stops at a building not too far off, which turns out to be his house, and Helena's hideout. Helena opens the door, but reminds Jan to knock, using their special passcode next time. She ensures nobody is watching before granting him access to the house. Helena laughs heartily upon learning that her animals are faring well, and the pregnant one has given birth successfully. 
At this point, she is willing to bet that Olivia will learn to love it in Botsky. We shall see if she's right about this. However, John places a bet that Olivia will end up selling the property, and Helena will end up living with him for good. Helena angrily asks him to shut up and orders him to pour them some liquor. She makes a toast to her daughter having good fortune, because she believes farming is deeply rooted in Olivia's blood. That night Cuba helps Olivia by fixing her car. He quietly smiles and listens to her, as she assures herself that he will do her the favor of taking care of her grandmother, while she returns to the city. Olivia informs him that she wants to bid goodbye to the horse her granny gifted her when she was little. Upon getting into the stable, she calls on Cuba to come check out the newborn goat, as something seems to be wrong with it. Her face is shrouded in worry while he observes the animal. Cuba excuses himself to go get some formula for the goat, which keeps refusing to take its mother's milk. Olivia holds the baby goat while feeding it formula milk, and feels happy after helping the small animal. After helping the goat they get back outside and Olivia asks about his daughter whom Cuba says the formula belongs to. She's quite surprised that he broke up with his ex. However, she offers to make them some sandwiches which leads them to the kitchen. Cuba watches her in admiration as she cooks the veggies. He confesses that she looks good while cooking. He is impressed with the sandwich she made and heartily eats it. While eating, some ducks walk into the kitchen and Cuba shoes them outside. Once he's back in the kitchen, he sees Olivia already asleep while still sitting. He stares at her smiling and thinks in his heart about how he has complicated things between them, especially by pretending to be the Wojtek she thinks he is. He quietly steps out to her car and touches some wiring before leaving for his house. It seems that he is finding ways to keep her in town longer. The following morning, Olivia's things are packed and she comes out giggling as she spots the farm animals all packed up in her car. After letting them out, she tries to start the car, but it does not work. She grunts in frustration, and then hears people talking in the barn. She flings the door open with a garden fork in her hand, just in case it might be needed. It turns out to be Romek and Zbyshek who were arguing the other day. She makes a deal with them to get her a mechanic, and in return they get to take her grandmother's sugar which they so desire. The men exclaim in excitement and start packing the sugar in cartons, until their wives interrupt and question where they are heading with Helena's sugar. The village women secretly go to the house where Helena is hiding. After using the secret knock code, Jan opens the door. Helena grants them access and asks them to fill her in on all that happened. Later that day, Spishik and Romek, afraid of disobeying their wives, tell Olivia and take back the deal. Olivia grunts and goes back to caring for the animals. She successfully feeds them, but the problem starts when she attempts to milk the goats. She runs all around chasing after them until she finally comes up with a plan that works. She carries out the cans of milk hoping to get them to the diary, when Matilda suddenly shows up. Matilda offers to assist her friend drop off the milk, then finds a way to convince Olivia to stay back and take a break instead of searching for a means to get back to the city. Matilda hands her a letter which was delivered to her mailbox. Olivia reveals she won't be opening it since it's addressed to Helena, but Matilda reminds her that everything is left in her care since the farm is her responsibility now. Olivia goes on to open the letter after Matilda leaves. She gets really pissed after reading the notice from Helena's creditor to make a payment of 25,000 zloty for settlement. Later on, Olivia decides to call Roberts and pretends to catch the flu to ask for a few more days off, but he figures out that she is lying. He gets her to reveal the truth to him, and eventually grants her a week off work. Where else can Olivia find such an empathetic boss? After the call, she leaps in excitement and gets on her horse heading straight to the address on the letter. She arrives there and finds a man named Adam, and his granddaughter arguing over a chef he just fired because the chef doesn't know how to cook. Olivia greets them and requests to meet the owner of the herbal world. Adam directs her to his son since he manages the inn. She walks down the path as directed and runs into Cuba. At this point, she still has no idea that Cuba is not Wojtek, as she keeps calling him. She also doesn't know that Cuba is the herb tycoon. She asks Cuba to lead her to his boss and shows him the notice her grandmother received. Cuba nervously makes up a lie that his boss actually left, but Olivia tells him that Adam just informed her he is here. Cuba excuses himself and goes over pleading with Wojtek to pretend to be Cuba Wolak, the owner of the herbal world. He promises to explain everything to him later because it's really urgent. And one more thing, he tells Wojtek to say yes to everything Olivia asks him. In a few minutes, they both head in Olivia's direction. As instructed, Wojtek keeps saying yes to everything Olivia is asking, which makes it more ridiculous for Olivia. Kuba steps in to save the conversation, telling Wojtek to agree to a meeting with Olivia so they can discuss and settle things regarding Helena's land. 
they reach an agreement and Wojtek excuses himself, giving Olivia the impression that he is nutty. In the evening, Olivia is back at the house and she's preparing something to eat when Zbyszek and Romek come to apologize, bringing gifts to appease her for failing to get her a mechanic. She accepts their apology and lets them in. She even offers them some of what she prepared and requests to know what's going on between Helena and the owner of Herbal World. To her surprise, her mother was the one who sold Helena's meadow to Adam Wolak, against Helena's wishes. Now she understands what the fight between the two women is about. No wonder her mother said they'll never be coming to Bodsky anymore. Before it gets completely dark, Olivia shows up at the inn as agreed. She meets with Wojtek who has already been briefed on what to say, but he decides to overplay his role, making Kuba drag Olivia right out of the inn to discourage her from making an offer to buy the meadow back. Wojtek comes out threatening to fire him if he doesn't apologize for the interruption. This is what happens when an imposter decides to go off character and threatens his boss with a silly thing. Kuba feels really irritated because he doesn't want to blow his cover, and Wojtek isn't making things any easier. Kuba's father and Tola, Kuba's daughter arrive at the inn, making Kuba more nervous. Adam approaches them asking if they finally reached a deal. Tola approaches Kuba calling her daddy, giving Olivia the clue that Kuba is not Wojtek, but is actually the owner of Herbal World, and the man who sued her grandmother. She feels disappointed in Kuba, who she refuses to give a chance to explain. After leaving the inn, Olivia heads straight to Jan's house. She suspects he might be hiding a woman in his house as she has seen a lady from his window. But Jan makes a joke about how he might just die if he has any such affair with a woman in his old age. Olivia goes on to find out from him the reason why the health department shut Helena down. While Jan is talking about the papers that her grandmother lacks, Olivia hears a sound in the room. So, she quickly runs to confirm her suspicions that Helena is hiding there. She doesn't find anyone inside, but comes back out smiling to herself. After they hear Olivia's horse galloping away, Jan comes out to help Helena get back into the house. He teasingly offers to assist her in rubbing lotion on her back, which might be itching her. Finally, he confesses that he is very willing to marry her if she lets him, but Helena just shrugs and walks into the house. Olivia passes by Matilda's house, and she invites her over for dinner. She joins her family, and happily chats with Matilda's children, who express the desire to go to the city to visit her someday. A few moments later, Matilda's husband excuses himself to put his children to bed, leaving the ladies to have some time to chat. Olivia gulps down half the wine bottle even before they start conversing. Soon after, Matilda sees her drunk friend off, and Olivia expresses grudge towards Kuba and Herbal World for putting her in such a situation. Meanwhile, in Tola's room, Kuba comes to join his daughter, who is on a call with her mother. After the call, she asks if he has sorted things out with Olivia. She admits that she likes Olivia, and she can see the reason why her father is in love with her. Kuba chuckles, asking her daughter how she knows if he is in love with her. He begins to tickle her for being too smart for her age. Kuba soon steps out to join his father outside. Adam advises him to man up and apologize to Olivia. Wojtek joins them singing a song, and he suggests that Kuba send him to go play an apology song for Olivia. Who knows, it might just spark up a few things between them. He insists that it will be a shame for his genes to go to waste, and it will be great for Tola to have siblings. Adam agrees with him, and teases him for making some sense whenever he puts his mind to it. Olivia gets home quite drunk, and she mistakenly spills some drink on her chest. In the course of cleaning it up, she stumbles upon some letters Helena has been sending to her for years. Unfortunately, they didn't get to her. She reads them and becomes emotional seeing how much love her granny has for her. It's quite saddening to find out that the one whom she has been holding a grudge against has so much love for her, contrary to her belief. That night, Kuba drives over to Helena's house, intending to apologize to Olivia, but a village lady stops him from entering the house. She insists on him leaving, emphasizing that Helena would not be happy to know that her enemy is seeing his granddaughter. The following morning the village lady runs over to John's place and requests to see Helena, so she can tell her about her suspicion of a romantic affair between her granddaughter and her arch-nemesis. Jan knows for sure that if Helena finds out, they might actually need to hold a real funeral for Helena. So, he asks Elka to keep it a secret and give him time to find a way around it. What's love if it's not protecting the interest of a loved one? In the next scene, Olivia receives a letter from Kuba, and it states that the ban on her granny making cheese has been lifted. She returns to the house excited as she cleans up the table, brings out Helena's utensils, and begins preparations. Wojtek comes singing and playing his guitar. After his rendition, he reveals it's an apology song from Kuba. Meanwhile, Jan drives over to Herbal World where he finds Kuba sitting by the doorstep. He asks Kuba what he wants with Olivia. 
After listening to him, he realizes that love is at play, and the young man is saddened that Olivia wants nothing to do with him. Cuba blames it on Helena who sued him first when he wanted to settle, and now he's the bad guy. John shuts him up and strongly warns Cuba that he will not let him disparage Helena. However, before leaving, he suggests to Cuba that he might just have a chance for something between him and Olivia. At Helena's place, Zbyshek, Romek and Matilda join Wojtek who is playing his guitar, and Olivia who is preparing some cheese in anticipation of the upcoming town fair. Tola soon comes to join them, and just like the others, she comments that Olivia's cheese tastes quite bland. She suggests that Olivia purchase some herbs from her father to spice up the cheese as her dad sells the best herbs in town. Later, Olivia takes Tola on a horse ride, and Tola pleads for her father on his behalf, telling Olivia that her dad has really fallen in love with her. Olivia smiles as she listens to the little girl requesting a favor from her. Tola wants her to take it easy on her father. Oh, sweet child. In the next scene, some investors arrive at the town. One of them tells his colleague that he has been here before and almost lost his life to mosquitoes. What's worse is that there's no reception and their GPS won't work. Fortunately, they see Zbyshek and Romek coming their way, so they ask for directions to Herbal World. The two point them in the direction to go and continue on their way unbothered by the two men who are getting into their car cautiously. At the inn, Kuba steps outside telling his father that he needs to go pick up some guests who may be arriving soon. He asks what arrangement Adam has made for their dinner and he is stunned to hear from Tola that his father will just be preparing some potatoes. On his way out, he stops by Olivia's place to request her help in preparing a meal for his guests. Gladly she obliges, and in no time she gets to work on the meals alongside Tola and Adam, who are helping her out in their kitchen. The investors finally arrive at the inn and Kuba comes to welcome them, but they seem unhappy with the locality and the stress they had to go through to locate Herbal World. They even threaten not to invest in Kuba's Herbal World. Thankfully, Olivia comes to the rescue as she serves them the first course of the dish she prepared. A tasty meal takes all worries away. The others watch them as they hungrily ravish the meals prepared by Olivia. After eating, they feel soothed, and now, they are willing to stay and have a peek at the herbs. They also suggest that Olivia's pay be raised with multiple zeros behind the figure, as her cooking really warmed their hearts. Little wonder, what a well-prepared dish can do to hungry men. After the meeting, Kuba comes back to inform Tola and his dad that the investors are gone, and thankfully, they are still interested in the business. He asks where Olivia is, and Tola tells him she just left, and urges him to go get her. Adam insists that he act like a man and meet Olivia as they have her to thank for it. Kuba meets Olivia by the river, where she is bathing her horse. Kuba thanks Olivia, and they stare at each other, seemingly surrendering their feelings silently. Then, Kuba leans in and kisses Olivia, which she warmly accepts. The kiss is cut abruptly when one of Kuba's female workers comes to interrupt. This seems to give a bad impression to Olivia, as she thinks there might be something between Kuba and the female worker. It turns out that the lady just wants to borrow his car to go help Adam who is stuck in the forest. He turns around to get back to Olivia, but she is already riding away on her horse across the other side of the river. Could there be something wrong? Let's find out. The next day is the day for the fair, and Helena is preparing to go support her granddaughter's cheese-making debut. Jan tries to stop her from leaving, so she tricks him into believing they are about to have a nice time. He lets his guard down. Swiftly she locks him inside the room and runs out of the house. At the fair, everyone is having a nice time as they listen and vibe to the Polish folk music playing in the background. Kuba meets Olivia at her stand, begging to talk to her. Adams comes offering to watch her stand on her behalf and urges them to go talk. To clarify everything, Kuba takes her to meet his ex-wife, and Tola does the talking. Tola introduces her mother to Olivia, as well as her mother's lover, who happens to be the lady who borrowed Kuba's truck at the river yesterday. Who could have thought? Helena arrives at the scene and finds the both of them together. She creates a scene by flogging Kuba and quarreling with her granddaughter for becoming friends with the enemy. She continues until Jan arrives at the scene and lashes at her for refusing to listen. He confesses that he is aware of their friendship and he is rooting for them. Jan makes her see that Olivia and Kuba working together is great. He gives her some cheese to taste and see. He convinces her that if the duo's friendship turns into love, Olivia might just end up staying in Bodsky for good, and they will have some grandbabies around. Helena likes the idea, but she calls him crazy for using the word, we, as she's the only one having the grandbabies. Later on, they are all enjoying the choir singing, and Olivia is resting in the arms of Kuba. Helena joins them, and he excuses himself to leave Helena and her granddaughter time to talk. Olivia asks her grandma if the farm is more important than her daughter. 
Helena corrects her and reminds her that it's not just any farm, but their family's land. However, she intends to call her daughter later, if she is ready to talk to her. Meanwhile, Spishek and Romek set up the stall to sell their moonshine drink, just like other vendors. They taste their product, and they feel so proud of themselves. Their wives soon join them requesting to have a taste of their drink, which turns out to be truly good. Matilda comes to inform Helena that she heard from a reliable source that Marilla Juras, one of the women currently performing at the fair, is the one who turned the health department against her. Out of rage, Helena attacks Marilla, other people get involved, and the fair turns into a mess. During the commotion, Wojtek takes the opportunity to go on stage and starts playing his song, Crazy Fellow. Kuba drags Olivia out of the commotion and takes her out to the fields. He informs her that his father is willing to renovate the kitchen to be fit for a chef like her. Unfortunately, Olivia reveals that she has to leave because she already has a life in Rokloff, saddening Kuba. He however understands her dreams for herself, and they seal it with one final kiss. The next day, Olivia is set to go back to the city. However, she is on the verge of tears, because she has built relationships with almost everyone in the town. They all gather to bid her farewell. On her way out of town, Tola and her dad watch her drive from the hilltop where they are. Tola suggests to her father to go after Olivia, or use a love potion just to get her to stay. What a suggestion! But Kuba tells his daughter that it doesn't work that way, because Olivia has to be willing to stay back. Olivia arrives in the city, and soon gets back to her daily life as a chef. The head chef notices the sad look on her face, and suspects that she must be missing Bodsky. Feeling that she is contemplating going back there, he offers to give her a raise and two free weekends a month if it will make her stay. Robert suggests they step out to talk about it, but Olivia confesses that she is in love and doesn't want any regrets in her life for not following her heart. Seeing that there is no convincing her, he lets her go. In the next scene, Kuba is tending to some herbs when Olivia comes to him telling him to take a lunch break. Not expecting her to come back, he smiles warmly as he turns around to welcome her and kiss her lips hungrily. Both hearts reconnect and that's how Olivia finds her place, people, and her man. Life is pretty sweet for her.